Hello, I'm here, I'm doing it. Hold on, I'm getting ready. We're at the point in Texas where it's still probably too hot to be wearing a sweater, but everybody else is posting all of their wonderful fall content and I'm jealous. So I'm gonna just convince myself that it's fall, even if it is 90 degrees outside. Who cares? It's fall now. I'm gonna get cozy. Cause we, oh my God, don't spill. Cause we are gonna talk about Fay Farm. Fay Farm. Fay Farm is the most hyped cozy game I've ever seen in my life. The marketing department for this game is top notch. So if you haven't heard of Fay Farm, it is a cozy farming slash fairy magical game that was released uh, September 8th of 2023 by Phoenix Labs. It has been taking the cozy gaming world by storm. Everybody is talking about it. Everybody's making review videos. And so I thought I should probably do that too. So what is the premise of Fate Farm, you ask? Well, let me tell you. You play as an adventurer that travels to Azoria, which is a magical little island that has been plagued with whirlpools and thorns. And so nobody else has been able to come in or out. Somehow you get through, I don't know. Uh, but they're really excited about it. And so your job is to go around and basically uncover all of the island's mysteries and make it a peaceful realm once again. It is available for Nintendo Switch and PC. So I basically got this the day that it came out and I've been playing it nonstop, extra nonstop, because uh, the day that it was released, I spent six hours in an airport as my flight was delayed and I had nothing else to do. So I just binged Fay Farm. And I've got a few thoughts. Some good, some bad, some in between. The game is retailing for $60 for Nintendo Switch and then either $40 or $60 on Steam. And at the end of this, I'll tell you whether or not I think this game is worth the money. So let's start with the storyline. The storyline has a really, really slow start. So at the beginning, I was like, what is going on? There's really nothing going on here. This is just your basic farming sim, except there's cute music and people talk about fairies. I know fairies are gonna show up at some point. I haven't seen them yet. Where are they? Why is this just like every other game? And I kind of wanted to put it down and walk away after a couple of hours, but then I kept playing. And at a certain point, the game totally changes. And all of a sudden, all these mysteries are unlocked and there's just magic everywhere and there's just fun stuff happening. Now, question, should it take three or four hours for the game to get exciting? Mm, I don't know. But once it gets fun, it gets really fun. The controls are kind of hit and miss. So one of the things that's really cool about this is there are basically no boundaries as to where you can run. You can run all over the map, nothing is off limits. You can jump as far as you want and you don't take any damage. You can jump off the highest cliff into the water. Um, and basically you can just like parkour all over the island. Actual controls when it comes to farming are a little fiddly. Okay, so there's like, there's good news in that you don't have to switch between your tools when you're farming. So if you till a spot and then you add seeds and then you water it and then you go chop a tree and then you go mine a rock, you're, you're, not, you're not switching out your tools. You just go and press A and it'll automatically switch it out for you. Number one, that saves time. I do like that. I don't love the fact that you don't get an option if you're misclicking or mishitting the button to, to not do the thing. Like if you're looking at a tree, you're trying to get the thing next to it. You're trying to get like the weeds next to it and you accidentally are looking at the tree. You're going to chop that tree. Like there's no stopping it. There's no like, oh, you meant to go hit this weed over here. No, you're chopping that tree. One other thing about the controls is later when you unlock animals, if you're sitting there tending to your crops and an animal comes into your field of vision, you just drop everything to pet, pet the animal. And I mean, to be fair, that is what I do in real life, so. <laughs> but when you're sitting there trying to do stuff and then the animal's just there and won't go away, and you're just like, move, I, I don't wanna keep petting you, I wanna water my plants, it is a little, a little fiddly. But speaking of farming, so let's talk about that. Farming is fun and it is complex. And I'm saying it like this because that is not immediately apparent. 
you start up and you talk to the seed lady and you're thinking, all right, it's a fairy gardening game. Like we're gonna have so much fun. We're gonna grow all these magical crops. Everything's gonna be really cool. And they're like, hey, you can buy turnips or cauliflower. And when I first started playing, I thought, what? Why am I planting turnips? That is so boring. What did they do? This is such a huge fail. And then I kept playing. And then you do start to see that you can unlock seasonal crops and you can also go and get, they call them fey crops. You can unlock the magical crops. Like you're good, it's there, I promise, it's there. The animals, same thing. At first you start out with what looks like chickens and rabbits. They're not chickens and rabbits, they're called something else, but they, they're basically chickens and rabbits um, and cows and sheep. And I do love the animations for gathering milk and wool. It's very, they're very cute. And I do like the chickens. The chickens are very cute. Um, the bunnies are a little creepy. But anyway, so you, you start out with those four and then later you unlock more magical animals and you can breed the animals that you have to unlock different colors. So there is some more complexity to that. You can make workshop stations to start building things. And there aren't too many makers. There are games that we played where it was just nothing but makers. Every, your whole farm was cluttered with like a million makers. This one, you only need one of each and they're only about like, I wanna say like 12 or 15, it's not that bad. And they all have really distinctive reasons for being there. So it feels very intentional, I do like that. There is a pretty solid emphasis on bug catching, but there's a reason for bug catching. So bug catching, is kind of a new staple of cozy gaming. People have really started injecting, creeping up on bugs and like getting after them with a net in every game that you do now. And I have never really been a fan of bug catching because I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a collector. I don't like collecting things. I would like to just let the bugs vibe and mind their own business. There is, however, a good reason for having uh, bugs here, and it's not a mean reason either. So what you do is you, you collect bugs and then you just put them in a cute little critter home and they just hang out for a little while. And then they leave, and when they leave, they leave you some kind of a gift. And you can use that gift later in potions or spells or different materials. So good job, Fay Farm. You made me like collecting bugs. Fishing is awful. <laughs> I just don't do it. They have a fishing mini game. It takes forever to get the fish's attention. And you gotta like jiggle the lure a couple of times. I haven't really found a good rhythm for that. And then when you do, there's this mini game where it just like stretches on your line, which is really similar to Coral Island, but much more annoying. And so I honestly, I just don't fish. They haven't really given me a major reason to fish. So I just don't do it. The music is like out of the park good. It's so good. Um, it's so whimsical, so pretty. The graphics are beautiful. The landscape is so beautiful and so colorful. Once you get into the magical part of it and the adventuring and the questing, it gets so fun and it gets so exciting and creative. I like that there are layers to the gameplay. Like it seems very simple at first and then there are more layers and you kind of peel those back and it's challenging to peel those back. It's not immediately apparent how to do things like unlock new animal colors or unlock magical crops. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself a little bit. Now we can talk about the things I do not like about this game. Number one, inventory management. Oh my gosh, okay. So the way that they have it set up, there's no shipping bin. You have to go to these market stalls that have each have eight slots and you can put one single item. You can't even put a stack in there. You gotta put one single item and later you can unlock additional market stalls. But still, I am constantly, constantly running out of inventory space. I need to drink coffee. The last thing is the characters. The developers have already admitted that world building and character development was not their focus. And yeah, you can tell. Number one, when you're running around town, there's this repetitive dialogue where the NPCs will all say the same thing. The first day I ran around, every single character was like, have you met the mayor? She works really hard to protect this town. Every, like I'm going from person to person and they're all saying like, have you met the mayor? <laughs> A little creepy guys, a little hive mind. And you don't really wanna make friends with them. There is a romance option and you can marry somebody, but I don't know why you would. 
I meet the marriage candidates and, and, and they just have the same boring dialogue. You walk up to them and you just say, hi, hello. And they're like, oh, you're flirting. And I'm like, I literally just said, hi, hello, how are you? Are we flirting? Is this flirting? I can't tell. So I don't know. I mostly just don't talk to the villagers at all. I just leave them alone, hashtag forever alone, and go focus on questing, which is the fun part. I can look past that. That's not a deal breaker for me. Could be a deal breaker for other people. People have commented that it is buggy. One of my chickens, no matter what happens, girl will just come out of the barn and then two seconds later, she's just floating, floating in the air over the village town square. Like, what are you, what are you doing up there, girl? Your cows and your sheep, you have to pet them every day and then you have to brush them every day so that they see happy and they produce well. And for some reason, once you pet them, you can't immediately go to brush them. The control option just doesn't pop up. So you gotta like pet them and then you gotta like run away and then you gotta run back and then you can brush them. It's little, it's little buggy stuff, um, but it's annoying. But the game is out and so now there are gonna be patches, right? They've already announced that they're gonna start doing patches because that's how we do games now. You don't release the game perfect, you just release it and then you say, hang on, we're gonna, we're gonna patch it for the next couple of months. And they're gonna put some more content in. So, I mean, that's kind of nice. Is this game worth the money? That's kind of complicated. So it's not a simple yes or no. It kind of depends on what you're into. If you really love world immersion and you really love dialogue with characters and you love really thoughtful writing, then no, this game is not for you. This game is basically the cotton candy of video games. It is, there's not a lot of depth and substance to it. It's just a lot of fun. Alternatively, if you love fun games and you love adventure and you love magic, then absolutely, you're gonna love this game. It is available for $40 on Steam for your PC. So I guess the question would be, is it worth an extra $20 for you to buy it on your Switch so it's more mobile? But if you're somewhere in the middle, right? and you really do like that world immersion, but it's not a deal breaker, but you really like that quest, the quest lines, but you also would prefer a game that wasn't buggy and didn't have chickens flying up in the middle of the air. You know, if you're just, if you're sort of somewhere in the middle, I would maybe recommend putting this on your wish list and buying it when it's on sale. I really, like, I should say at the end of the day, I'm really enjoying playing it. There's never a point where I'm like, ugh, I hate this game. I really like it. Is it gonna be the best game I've ever played? No. Am I probably going to play this nonstop for a few months and then walk away from it until a new patch, content patch comes out? Probably. So, um, yeah, that's the game, Fake Farm. Have you played it? Do you like it? Do you agree with anything I'm saying? Do you disagree with everything I'm saying? Do you think that I should never make video game reviews again? Let me know in the comments, except for that last part. You just think that in your head. Leave it to yourself. <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, thanks for, if you're here, oh my gosh, thank you for sticking out to the end. Hit the like button. It'll make me feel better. Hit the subscribe button if you want more of this nonsense. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, okay, bye.